<laughs> no, but I remember Gabby goes on live and there's one viewer on her Insta live. And you know how like people be like influencers be on live and they be trying to act like they don't see the one viewer. So Gabby's like, anyways, guys. Um, and then, and then our mom comments, Gabby, why are you awake? Period. Go to sleep. I told you, I told you to go to sleep. Hello everyone and welcome back to Do I Know You? I mean, let's just start with the obvious. You're here, which just tells me that you want more and more and more. And I am here to be your humble servant. I'm here to serve you more on a silver platter, period. Y'all, welcome back. This is a me every episode. This is a really special episode, but this is actually a super special episode because we will actually be interviewing someone today who has had to grow up and not just, I don't know, she's had to grow up in a really tough environment with me as her older sister. <laughs> Y'all, today we're interviewing my younger sister, Miss Gabby, Miss Gabrielle. Um, so here's the thing, like I'm a big personality, like if possible, Gabby's bigger. And one thing I will not allow is for her to upstage me on my own show. We'll see if she does that or not. Um, I will be making sure that I'm not embarrassed here on my own platform, okay? But I'm really, really excited for y'all to get to know Gabby. She, yeah, like I said, she's like the baby. So um, all of her older siblings are amazing, if I can say so myself, but she's also just so incredible. And she does it all. Like when I tell y'all, she does it all. She does it all. And I'm just really proud of her. She, well, I'm not gonna spoil, not me spilling the tea already, but she is just doing so much and I'm, incredibly proud just to see her shine like I feel like as people always say like as a parent you just want to see your, like your kid do better than like you like I feel like in a weird way like that with Gabby like she continues to like surpass me and like just I don't know just her maturity and all these things so I'm really excited to talk with her today and I'm glad she unblocked me because I used to be blocked and I'm glad she picked up the phone when I asked her to come on. So yeah, y'all, it's going to be great. So without further ado, welcome my sister, Gabby. All right, y'all, today we have a very special type of episode because the celebrity they're related to is me. Welcome, my little sister, Gabby. Be so for real. No. Don't do too much before you get kicked off the show. Don't do too much. <laughs> Don't censor me. Let me speak my truth. No, you're being censored for this episode. No, y'all, this is really exciting because obviously, like, I have a very unique perspective, but in addition to being related to me, the celebrity, obviously, my younger sister is related to our older brother. So we're just going to give a little, a little truth moment right now. We're doing a little heart to heart. Okay. Don't do too much before you get kicked off. Gabby, what's up? Oh my goodness. Uh, just, you know, another week in high school. How are you? Wow. Yeah. Cause you're giving the girls spring semester. Do you have senioritis? Oh my goodness. I've had senioritis since junior year. You know what? Like I literally cannot see when people say that. Only I'm allowed to say. People will be like, yeah, I've had senioritis since I was literally 12. No. Because no, spell senioritis. Spell senioritis. S-E-N-I-O-R-I-T-I-S. Right. Next okay, question. Okay, listen, listen, because you know why? When you're in classes with all seniors, you like, when they leave, you leave. So it's kind of like my mentality just went out the window when they left. Mom watching this like, <laughs> I say it to her face. Her watching this literally so mad. <laughs> she knows. Mom's like, Gabby, like, finish strong. I'm like, I finished strong a while ago. Like, I'm we're screaming. Wait, you know what's actually so funny, y'all? One of my favorite Gabby mom moments was when 
Gabby went on Instagram live and our mom made like this burner account and it's like family girl like 04 or something don't out mom's account right now well I don't know the actual y'all go blow her page up no but I remember Gabby goes on live and there's one viewer on her insta live and you know how like people be like influencers be on live and they be trying to act like they don't see the one viewer so Gabby's like anyways guys um and then and then our mom comments Gabby, why are you awake? Period. Go to sleep. I told and you. Then, I told you to go to sleep. And then, and then when I didn't go to sleep, she came in. She said the live has now gone live. Yeah, that Instagram live era was really, truly an era. It was quarantine. I had nothing else to do. Like, I know. I kind of love Instagram live. Should I go live? I think you should, honestly. I feel like a lot of people cannot pull lives off well, but I feel like you would. I feel like you Thank would. Thank you. Well, I also feel like the girlies are on TikTok live now. Like, they're not. I, I agree. I don't get TikTok live to save my life. Like, what are all the things happening on the screen? Well. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, but my, yes, I do. But my TikTok live is either two things. One, it's a pre like recording of this guy trying to like blow up a watermelon by putting rubber bands on one by one. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Yeah. And the other is ASMR. In fact, no. <laughs> remember we are <laughs> me trying to bring it back. Anyways, Gabby, thank you so much for coming on to Do I Know You. Absolutely. I'm so excited for the girlies and the guys and the days and the thems and everybody in between to hear your story like how old are you asking for the audience not myself no you are asking for yourself because every time someone asks you how old I am you never know right I am 17 I will be 18 in April period okay yeah so you definitely are the youngest guest we've had so far and um I just feel like you will offer like a very fresh take like you're obviously very mature. Ugh, let me gassing you up. This is all for the show. Trust that I would not say this outside. But obviously uh-huh. you're really mature. <laughs> and yeah, like I, I really do feel like you have a very unique perspective on like life, but also things like fame, tan- tangentialness, tangentiality to fame and carving your own path. Because ultimately, like I know you want a career, which I won't spoil, but you want a career that not necessarily a fame, but just of like influence and um, I don't know, just getting to meet more people. So let's get into it. Gabby, how would you describe yourself? Who is Gabrielle Mackenzie Davis? And what are the last four digits of your social security number? Um, <laughs> I actually don't know them. Um, Don't tell my mom. So basically I would describe myself as a very well-rounded individual um I've never been good at descriptions until I wrote my resume for college um so (laughs) I would say I'm very compassionate Mm. I am very passionate and I'm also very emotional which you know being a a teenager in this time full when in a world full of emotions has been very difficult to like find balance um but I'm also very involved Um, I care very deeply and I also care a lot about problems in the world and about the people I love. Um, I guess that includes Jordan. Um, and yeah, um, I feel like I have a lot to offer the world in terms of a lot of different things. So yeah. Period. Yeah. A thousand percent. I feel like, um, it's interesting. I, I think that's like a perfect way to describe you. I will say on the emotional piece. Y'all, you know, like calling everybody with younger siblings, y'all know when the worst day of your life, when you're like the older sibling to a younger sibling is when the younger sibling learns how to stand up for themselves. Listen, you were rolling when you realized the first time I said no to something you asked, you almost cried. (laughs) And did, because now what do I do? I'm lost. You do it I literally yourself. used to, I remember one time I dropped my skincare um at our cousin's house. I dropped our my skincare in the toilet and I was like, Gabby, come upstairs. You came upstairs. I was like, pick that up out the toilet. And you were like, no, I was like, but you have to, or else it's gonna be bad. You're like, 
And so you picked it up. I said, yeah, light work. And then when I asked you to do like something silly, I was like, oh yeah, Gabby, can you go get my phone for downstairs? No, why don't you go get it? <gasps> oh no, no, no. Off from your lungs. Listen, say no, say no, say okay. no. Okay, okay. Not, oh, not too much. The older sibling little fear thing can go away fast. I learned that very quickly. Well, see, that's the thing. Like, that's something I want to talk about is you are like, the baby so yeah out of all of our siblings so I feel like do you feel like you've had to like grow up faster do you feel like you you know they say like the youngest child is like the most spoiled like what do you feel like describes you in that way um I feel like I did grow up faster but I don't think it's because I was the youngest sibling um I think it's just because you know stuff happens and I feel like situations in life make you grow up faster than necessarily you were supposed to but also, I would say I was pretty spoiled. But also, I think everyone was spoiled. Like, I think you're spoiled, too. You know what I'm saying? That wasn't the question. That wasn't the question. Equal okay. opportunity. Yeah, yeah, that's fair. That's fair. But also, I think in terms of, like, being the youngest sibling, it's kind of hard to find yourself sometimes. Mm-hmm. Because you come after so many footprints. It's like in, like, it's like in the snow. When you're driving in the snow and there's tracks. Like, when the road isn't paved yet and there's tracks on the snow but there's so many tracks they are like which one do I go on like, which is that's kind of how I felt like I was just driving on all the tracks some weren't the best tracks like you know they were a little icier but then I just decided I needed to make my own tracks so that's mm. kind of what I've been doing just kind of how I feel you know what I'm saying that analogy might have ate it really oh. might have ate no that's so true do you feel like I don't know. In what ways did you feel like that was applied? Like when it came to figuring out, like, do you want to play sports? Like, obviously, our older yeah. siblings played sport, play sports. Like, I was more like theater drama. Like, do you feel like that's when it kind of hit you the most? Yeah, I honestly, anytime I think about it, like when people ask me, like, did you play basketball? Like growing up, I always think about playing indoor basketball. And I think about the fact that I was not tall. And I was the shortest one on the court. And I wore a blue little lamb shirt. With huh? a and I couldn't reach the hoop. So I would just run back and forth. <laughs> <laughs> and I didn't know uh. what was happening. So I feel like I had to test everything out. And I mean, you and I did theater together. Um, but eventually we both kind of grew out of it. Um, we just took the drama off stage. Period. Oh. Um, <laughs> and so... And I think in that sense, but I kind of pulled different things that I liked from each thing I tried. Like I tried dance. Um, I was like, I like dancing, but I don't like pirouettes. Mm. So it's like, I'm going to do this. And then I'm like, I love like singing from theater. So I'm going to take this, kind of form my own hobbies and stuff. And it kind of formed me into, you know, what I do now and like what I enjoy and everything like that. Period. So what is it that you do now? What is it that you enjoy? So I... I'm really involved in music. Um, I'm a singer. I lead la, worship. La, 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 la. Back to you. <laughs> I lead worship at my church. Um, and I'm also in an award winning acapella group in my high school called Forte. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Listen, I what else do I do with singing? Um, I've gotten into a camp that is in LA run by you know, you might know them. Ben Bram, Bobby Kaplan, Rob Dietz. Got into that last year. Super fun. Um, and I'm going back this year. It's called Acapella Academy. Um, and I just, like, have committed so much of my time to music. Um, acapella, now I've been doing that for three years. And I feel like I've just been singing for a very long time. And I have to take my singing, ble- my blessing of being able to sing outside the house. Because people were getting upset with me. Which, mm. I don't really understand but it was better than the bassoon yeah I was gonna say the worst morning of my life was it was like the first day of summer break I think and you had picked up the bassoon I was so mad at you why okay first of all of all instruments why the bassoon and secondly why would you decide to start at 6 a.m in the summer you know what's funny though is like Mom and I went on that tour, like, of all the instruments in the middle school. Like, you could tour kind of what instruments there were. And yeah. the funniest thing is when I went to the section with, like, the woodwind instruments, 
the guy told me to smile and he goes oh you have an overbite play this uh, uh, I, was like, I was like okay wait so, what that's, that's how he decided that's how he decided he was like oh you'd be great for the bassoon and i was like period so i picked well, that shady up. period I know, honestly and he but he gave me lessons well lessons yeah they didn't work Shout out to him. They did not work. Four sixth grade, so I was like ready to go for band. You know, practicing my bassoon, hot cross buns in my mom's room, and no one appreciated that. Why would we? (laughs) And so eventually, would we? We we gave it away. You know, literally, (laughs) it was my time. Wait, shout out to that man making little kids insecure one child at a time. That's insane. That he no, honestly, he really, he really did something. You he know what that's really- giving? It's definitely giving. Um, we fit being like you're obese. Like <laughs> you're like five We're years not old. Born. <laughs> you are morbidly obese. Okay, go play bowling. Like that's what that's giving. You no, know, it's truly, it truly was really interesting because he didn't tell the other kids that so i was just like right. wow and wow. i was trying to ask like why are you asking me to smile that is sick okay so you mentioned that music is a really big part of your identity through things like praise and worship at church where you lead it period 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 and then also through things like singing in forte and acapella camp like different things why do you think it's such a big part of who you are well i think you know like everyone else we all have moments in life that um kind of shape us or things that kind of give us comfort and for me throughout my experiences and through times when stuff got really rough music was where I turned Mm -hmm. um but also like God was where I turned also come on oh my shot top period come on okay (laughs) and um so I kind of wanted to find a way to combine those and I don't want to say that it kind of fell in my lap but worship clearly like truly was something that god gave me Mm. um and that's how i know that i'm like supposed to be doing it just because the situation and when it happened like was too good you know exactly too good and um so um i started worshiping at church when i was in sixth grade which is the youngest someone has ever done it at the church that i go to but honestly i would say that like it made me it also made me grow up a Mm. lot that's another reason I feel like I grew up fast but it also gave me so many great life lessons that even through the tough times someone's always there and that someone is God amen and that made me feel really great about going and pursuing other things related to music um yeah like choir and forte and acapella academy and um you know being afraid is you know, gonna happen and it's natural, mm. but being able to get past that fear truly, I would say, came from my background in worship and knowing the word. Um, because I would say that, like, I feel like I wouldn't be as strong in my faith if I had not led worship, um, just because of distractions and things yeah. like that. But, um, yeah, music has just always been where I've turned to for difficult things and, you know, losing friends um gaining new friends um has all come through like you know being able to put a song to it i have playlists follow me on spotify no this is not the time for you to self-promote period no but that is a really good answer and i feel like it's been really cool for me as an older sister to watch you find like your lane like obviously we knew you're like really talented and like had a great voice but to be (sighs) able to like serve the lord with it and then also not more importantly, but in another way, like you are able to like reach others because of you singing on stage or you singing in a group and like other things, you know? So that's really amazing. And so I know the answer, but tell the people, so is being a singer, like professionally a goal of yours? Like yes, future years? Yes. And you know, what's funny is I used to say like, oh, I want to be a famous singer like Ariana Grande. Like, oh, that's like such the goal. I want to just like, I just want to give God the glory. Like Ooh. that is truly like my favorite thing ever. Um, I love 
worship. Like it truly is where I find so much peace. Mm. And because the world is not peaceful, if y'all didn't know, like it's not. So to be able to like be there on a Sunday or a Wednesday or any day in between and just feel unexplainable peace. Mm. I still have joy and chaos. I've got peace. I can't explain. Ooh. From Foundation, Maverick City. Like, I appreciate that so much. So, yes, the goal would be to be doing that all the time. Yeah. Love to be in, like, a group like Maverick and just be able to, like, oh, it just makes me so excited because I know that I have this gift for a reason. Um, And even the opportunities I've gotten at church, um, like the worship pastor and stuff, he is really, like, open so many doors for me mm. um and give me so many opportunities you know when you have those opportunities that you're like why would you trust me with this I don't trust literally myself. like I get those at church and I would love to do that all the time like I would really love to I don't need the fame I just want I just want to sing like I really do just love it and it will happen period speaking period. Of life, yeah it's a done deal like Maverick is listening to this, and they are listening so period um okay great so let's transition a little more into like your identity and how it's been kind of formed as like the babyest sibling um and like obviously we're speaking in terms of like relation to our sibling that's a celebrity which dre basketball me obviously but like i'm curious to know how your identity has been shaped or maybe not shaped by that as well so I guess my first question, maybe just more of a statement where we go, where you go to high school, where I went to high school is like, it's like basketball. very, yeah. It's like very weirdly like basketball worshipy. Like it's like really kind of weird. Yeah, it is. Like, I think it's something we have like a lot of good basketball talent that comes out of it sports period. But yeah. do you feel like, um, I don't know. Do you feel like people attach being like Dre's sister to you even more so because they're like just so crazy for basketball period? Oh, a hundred percent. Which honestly like is frustrating, but you, it's something like I've had to learn how to live with. But like at first, like when you go to high school, you try to figure out ways to fit in. Mm. And so I think, you know, in beginning of high school, I was like, oh, this is dope. Like, I'm going to like, you know, <laughs> and now I look at like freshman Gabby. I'm like, I wish you just shut your mouth. Me? Like, <laughs> just shut up. Just, just shut just up. Stop talking. Just, just, just stop talking. Just like, it's just so annoying. <laughs> like, yeah. Also, it's just, I think it would be completely different if the school wasn't so sports focused yeah and also if like my life and what I do in school didn't tie so much to like sports just because of the teachers I have and stuff like that the advisory that I'm in it makes it a little bit difficult sometimes to kind of be constantly around that but I also think that people have just acknowledged the fact and we've all kind of moved on like yeah I just you know what I'm saying yeah no a thousand percent a thousand percent they're like yeah because you're um like homeroom teacher is like the basketball coach right yeah assistant basketball coach yeah yeah so it's like constantly around which like isn't to say is a bad thing unless they like put expectations on you that just don't need to be there like and he's great like he like he doesn't do it but it's just like half the team is in my advisory yeah exactly and it's a lot and you're not it even is- like a basketball watcher so like for you it's like i don't go to one game <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> didn't even have to add that no literally <laughs> and I feel like people I don't know if it's like a Gen Z thing that we do or what but like people want clout and they will search for that however they can get it it's like we've talked about this on the show but like people find out who like a certain person like is related to like not just us, but like all the guests and everything. And they're oh, like, yeah. immediately like, oh, hey, bestie. Hey, girl. Hey, sit. Like, uh, 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 uh. where were you when I asked for the answers to the homework? That's yeah, where what were you I'm then? saying. Where yeah. were you? They were like, nowhere to be found. No, like all of a sudden you just popped out of nowhere. And that's crazy because 
it really does teach you how to find real friends fast. Mm, speak that on. Is I really had to learn because yeah. there were definitely people, mostly guys, um, at the school who really just wanted a piece of not me, but of Dre. Mm. But they made it seem like you know what I'm saying. And yeah. It's really, really, really interesting to kind of navigate that and be like, oh, you you weren't trying to be friends yeah We're trying to you know get this they're like yeah like that which is like really interesting I remember in middle school one time I walked into my advisory I left my phone there I had to go do something else and these two people were trying to get <gasps> into my phone that is just so ridiculous I'm like what what <laughs> like I don't understand it's ridiculous what people think they can like it's the entitlement for me. I think that's what it is. You have no entitlement to any part of my personal life. And that's kind of what I'm like working on right now at work too. I feel like in like school, it's one thing. And then like now in like a corporate environment too, I think it's just a whole other monster. Like yeah, people just feel very entitled to know details about not just like their coworkers, their peers, their the personal lives. Yeah. Thing. And like, especially I see a lot on TikTok with the comments and things like that. Like, especially in the dating world, like you do not need to know. Yeah. It's not really your business. It's really, it's really not. Yeah. Like not. I feel like that's really interesting. Yeah. That's actually like really just like sucky, honestly, that you still, that you experienced that. Cause I feel like I felt that in high school too. Like, I don't know for me, I feel like I've always, and you too, like main character energy period. And it's like, I don't think any of, our siblings like I would really like post like my Instagram was just kind of pictures of me low-key but, no, like, but at the end of the day like if I'm proud of you I'm gonna post a pic of you if I'm proud of Toy, I'm gonna post a pic of Toy. like our oldest sister. I'm pr- if I'm proud of Dre I'm gonna post a pic of him like right. it's like not anything you need to hide it's your it's your other siblings and so that was something that really frustrated me was like when I would get like unwanted attention from like guys wanting like something for me or like I don't know just like people wanting clout and me being like, first of all, you shouldn't come to me for this at all. And two, it's like, why do you feel like you're entitled to that? If I'm just posting a pic and then people would respond. And this was what really got me mad is they'd be like, well, you shouldn't have posted the pic. That's what I'm saying. Be for real. If I'm I- literally proud of my brother, I'm going to post a picture. If I'm proud of you, like we haven't even talked about this yet, but like your scholarship, I'm going to post a pic and they would do the same thing. They still post a picture of Benjamin eating a PB and J. So if y'all can do that, I can do this. And it shouldn't even be different. It's the same thing. It's just the fact that one of us has status, like one of our siblings has status and one of them doesn't. Yeah. And that's the problem, but it shouldn't be like that. It but shouldn't. It's just a cultural, like brain wiring thing that yeah. something is different. Yeah, exactly. It's not. It's, it's literally not at all. And that's why I think like, especially you and I have such a unique take because we're so much younger. Like, yeah. I don't know, like being in school during um, like playoffs and like being in school during just like big moments. It's like, you like, obviously we're so excited for him. We're so excited, like for each other's wins as siblings, but like, you almost feel like you have to like hold that excitement from school because it just comes with too many attachments yes that is I remember so the beginning of the year we had spirit week and one of the what what is spirit week spirit week is just basically you know dressing up um according to themes um we do it a little differently at our school but that's kind of like the premise of it yeah and um we one of the themes we did this year was adam sandler day I bet did everyone just wear big jean shorts it was actually one of the best days at the school because I didn't change a thing. Anyways. Um, <laughs> Not <laughs> you literally are Adam Sandler. I oh. am Adam. Uh, and I'm pretty sure I wore the exact outfit I'm wearing right now. That's a whole other conversation. It is. And, because, and that's I an wanted, intervention waiting to happen. I wanted to wear a backwards hat. And the only hat I had was a championship hat. And so I was like, mm, do I wear this hat? and get asked about it every time or risk someone taking it off of me or like doing all these things or do I just not bother mm. guess which one I chose I didn't yeah. bother but and that's, that's, the, thing. that's like, the thing it shouldn't even be that way though like it's unfortunate and you know what Gabby I honestly think it comes with age too like 
you're at like a very like vulnerable age. I think as you grow, I mean, we're literally four years apart, but like truly, like even in college, like I just think you get more confident with like, you might ask me a bunch of questions and I'm totally okay and comfortable with literally saying like, you don't deserve to know that part of my life or like, what do you mean by that? Or like hitting him back with questions. Like people yeah. know you don't have to be anyone's stomping bag just because you want to like keep certain parts of your life private. Like that doesn't make you weak. That makes you strong because you can literally like draw a boundary. You know what I'm saying? And that, yeah. And period. And that goes with a lot of big things. And I feel like, I know, I think we can both speak, which I think mom has done a really good job in teaching us that, that like you are not a doormat. No. Um, and I feel like I've definitely gotten better, but of course, you know, I'm in high school. It's going to get yeah. difficult at times and things yeah. like that but yeah yeah Whew. why am I like triggered back to high school no I'm telling you how many more months do I have just a few girl just three a- yeah it's uh it's it's interesting well okay so we were talking about how where you go to high school is like pretty basketball obsessed but I on do you know the word microcosm what that means no what does that mean basically I think s- where you go to school let me not say it for privacy like is a yeah. microcosm or like just like a smaller version of like what we see in the world oh like a small example you know and like that's like american celebrity culture it's very interesting um we kind of touched on this with like the gen z thing what do you make of like celebrity culture specifically in our generation especially like the rise of tiktok i mean like it's kind of insane Honestly, like, I feel like at this point, celebrity culture is honestly, like, now I just call it, like, viral. Like, it's just, like, viral culture. Like, how Mm. viral can you get? And, like, I feel like every other day I see someone becoming a celebrity. Mm. Like, you can do one thing. You can get God to be stuck in your hair. Next thing you know, you have a Don't do my girl, Terrica. I'm not doing my girl, Terrica. But it just becomes anything. Like, yeah. Something be- like something little becomes something ginormous. Yeah. Um, and I think I do see that a lot in my school. Um, specifically with, I mean, not honestly, not just with the sports, but like, um, for example, like the Forte account, like my acapella group last year, uh, uh, and like a TikTok went viral, got over a million views, and next thing you know, has over seven thousand followers, like that just to me is like the like wow the the transfer of just how fast now things blow up and stuff it makes it kind of difficult to almost keep up and I see that a lot I think it's just with the amount of information we can consume as people um it becomes exhausting but like I agree with you about celebrity culture especially looking at like no hate but like the Kardashians like the fact that that show is one still running two probably like more successful than ever and it's like for what like honestly for what and like no hate to them truly but I'm just like people just like like to feel like attached to that like by whatever means possible and I think it also ties to the fact that for a lot of athletes like you know you see interviews you see all this stuff but like people assume that they know them just by what they're seeing athletes movie stars everything and like i'm probably guilty of it like with beyonce sometimes i'll talk about beyonce like i literally know her and i'm like i don't know this woman like literally oh, honestly me too me with harry but yeah I'm not really the same you thing. don't know you don't know him like that's the thing it's just like because there's so much information out it's like constant overhaul and i think that's where we the reason i ask you the question is because i think that's where we kind of see this tension at school is like people feel like they know your brother they they think they do and that's why they feel like they can like get buddy buddy to you like for him or whatever they're doing it's like you don't know him you don't know me so how do you know him you were not talking to me before this you were saying really bad things about me to Mm. my face Mm. pulling my hair on the bus and now you want to talk i just find that interesting but like i'm really glad that you have like a good head on your shoulders with the whole thing like going into college because I mean it can like really get you spun like oh yeah you really have to like know who you are and like what you're willing to tolerate and what you're not period yeah period. yeah speaking of college where are you going I'm going to the University of Dayton 
Period. Go Flyers. And I'm going to major in PR, which is actually very on brand. Yeah, it is. And I need a publicist, so perfect. <laughs> Not you looking around. And I just have to shout Gabby out. Obviously, she's very mature. She's this, that, and the third. And this mm-hmm. girl got a full ride scholarship to UD. So, Gabby, so proud of you. Like, truly. Thank you. Oh, you helped, though. Like, honestly, like, you being the person who, like, you know, got that full ride, like, not the same full ride, but a full ride to school, yeah. Um, you know, being able to keep me calm, because I was, I was a stress mess, like, I yeah. was stressing out, so yeah. um, it was a family ordeal, like, it was not period. just me. So it's a it family me. victory, too, period. period. We're so proud. So as we wrap up, as we wrap up, what do you want the world to know about Gabby? Just Gabby. Not Jordan's sister, not Toya's sister, not Dre's sister, not anybody's daughter. Like, just Gabby. Um, you've not seen the last. Period. And, like, there's nothing else to say. <laughs> like, that's that. She said that I, is a full sentence. Like, I don't. I love it. And I agree. You have not seen the last. I am just so excited for, I don't know, this interview to like resurface like years down the line. And people be like, when you're in LA and I'm sitting on a couch. Why would you be on a couch? Oh, do it. Be doing my PR duties. Period. Period. No. Yeah. You're you're funny. You're so funny. Um, so Gabby, you kind of dropped a lot of dimes so far, but what advice? Well, let me back up. Obviously, like here on Do I Know You, we're all about celebrating identity just through the specific lens of siblings and children of celebrities. So what advice would you give someone, let's go specifically like a younger audience, um, like who's struggling to like kind of chart their own path, find their own identity? Like, what would you tell them? What has helped you? Mm, Okay, this is going to sound confusing. Okay. You can be influenced without being influenced. Wow. Say more. You you can have a role model and, you know, want to maybe be like them and want to, you know, have the success, but you can do it in your own way. Mm. You can follow the snow tracks and still get somewhere else. right now like I like I that honestly like truly has been such a battle for so many years and like I mean I could cry because I just really did struggle like I really did struggle trying to figure out who I was Mm -hmm. but when I found out that I could still have Dre as a role model Toya as a role model Jordan as a role model like Jordan's my one like period sitting right under your room right now um clean it up (laughs) <laughs> now it's dirty so I can have all of these people who I look up to and I can take steps to be more like them and still be myself mm. and it's okay to struggle in the process and it's okay to feel lost and feel like you're floating and feel like you have absolutely no idea what's going on but at the end of the day you got this like mm. it's it's okay to take a step back it's okay to take that little little lamb shirt off and take step off the basketball court take just a step, step off, off. Just, just go, go ahead and log out for me Bro, that, was, that was literally me when i showed up to play a basketball game and i only brought one basketball shoe that should have been a sign that That's honestly should have been a sign. that hustle picture that yeah picture maybe i'll insert it here crazy it's insane literally sick yeah, that's what i would say just like remember and don't be afraid to mess up also because mm. you're like, going to I, it's inevitable yeah like i'm 17 and i've messed up at least once like what anyways not me really thinking you're about to get sentimental okay so um obviously you're passionate about a lot but i want to give all of our guests the opportunity to spotlight something a cause or a current topic or just something that they're passionate about um so yeah what would you like to highlight today um in terms of current topic um, I feel like it's only right 
to um, bring attention to the earthquake um, that is affecting Turkey and Syria right now. Um, like, it's truly unbelievable. Um, and, you know, no words that I say will change what happened. But what I can say is we need to be giving proper attention and shining proper light on what matters in the world um, and not you know, what else is like, what all the other noise. Um, so my thoughts and prayers go mm -hmm. out to the people of Turkey and Syria right now. Like, and truly, if you can donate to a valid, yeah, a valid, um, and just, you know, we have to do what we can because as Americans and, um, just as people in general, wherever you are, um, we probably have it better than they do right now. Mm. And even if we don't, we have to bring people up with us. Um, so that's, what I'd want to highlight. So yeah. Period. Completely agree. Completely agree. We have to put our money where our mouth is and donate as well. So I'm glad you said that. But yeah, definitely praying for everyone there as well. Um Gabby, such maturity, such grace, such poise. Maybe uh -huh. born Gabby, what are the odds you were actually born in a leap year and you're not 17, but you're actually 68? Does that make any sense? I'm pretty sure, isn't it? You're four years, four times younger. Four times? Hey, I'm in business, not STEM. Don't question it. Hold on. My last what? question for you is where can the people find you? Where can they keep up with you? What do you have coming up that we should be looking out for? Um, My Instagram is underscore Gabby. That's G-A-B-B-Y D underscore that's my instagram tiktok is mackie m-a-c-k-y-y-z mackie z all your tiktoks are just like sped up songs times five and you going listen i don't know how it's working but it is doing its thing so and i don't post on tiktok to give views i just post on tiktok because it's fun like period so hey haters gonna hate um and if you want to keep up with stuff that I'm doing, you can follow Forte Acapella. Um, that's Forte, F-O-R-T-E, Acapella, Acapella. Okay, we'll put it up. We'll put it all up. Um, but yeah, follow all on all platforms, Forte. Um, have a really big concert coming up, video release concert where we release our music videos. Um, bunch of fun stuff in the works, traveling. So yeah, it's a good, it's a good time. Yeah, period. Wow. And then after all that, then you go to school and like your new chapter of your life starts. So it's a busy no, time. Honestly, right? yeah. It's going to be good. Even in this busy time, I'm grateful that you could pencil me in because you don't be answering texts, but you answered the call and I appreciate you for it. Gabby, seriously, I'm so proud of you. I like love how you can just articulate like what you feel. And that's like a skill I feel like a lot of people don't have. Like I am like really bad at articulating like the things I'm feeling in my head. I'll just be like, yeah, you know, like, you know, so I don't know. But you have like a really I same thing though. <laughs> I mean, but you just you really do have a gift. So one of your many really? gifts. Okay. So thank you so much for coming on Do I Know You? Um, you're just that girl, period. So y'all, I hope you learned so much from Gabby in her 68 years of wisdom. And we will see you next week. Cheers to you all. Mwah. Goodbye. I mean, like, what can I say? Like, what do I say after that? First of all, she just literally outdid me on my own show. She's never invited back. Ever, ever, ever. But honestly, like, Gabby just hit the girlies with the ultimate mic drop. Y'all ain't talking like her. Y'all ain't thinking like her. Y'all ain't doing it like her, period. I am so proud of Gabby, one, for coming on, and two, for just being so vulnerable with her insights. Like, that's a really scary thing to do, to share your authentic, unique experience to you, especially with a conversation as big as this. And she did it flawlessly. So Gabby, thank you so, so much for coming on. I'm being very nice to you right now, so maybe you should do what I asked and clean my room. But truly, like, I'm just, I'm just really appreciative of her younger perspective 
because even though she's younger, like she just exudes, obviously y'all can tell like a maturity and like a grace far beyond her years. And I think it's going to serve her really well. When I went to college, it was like a very defining moment for me because all of those things that she's like learning right now is like what I learned. I realized I was like, oh wait, people are going to want me for my brother and not for me. I have to learn how to shut that down immediately. You either shut it down or you let people pick on you. And like, that's just that. And you have to shut it down because picking on you is not, it's li- it's like, it's not even on the table with us. It's not on the table over here. Um, but yeah, it was like a really pivotal moment for me. And so I'm just really excited to see what happens in Gabby's life as she continues to serve God, serve other people, and just like, ultimately like, indulge herself with boundaries and with standing up for herself. And like every day, Gabby's confidence just grows and grows. And so I'm really, really proud of her. You wish, Gabby. I shed no tear over you. But I am extremely, extremely, extremely grateful that you came on. So that marks another episode of Do I Know You? I mean, y'all, we're just going right along. This has been such a joy for me to just watch you all love on it and interact with it and tell me that you relate. Like, it is really like a dream come true. So keep letting me know who you want to see next. Keep letting me know what you like, what you relate to. Um, and we're just gonna, we're just gonna keep it pushing. So y'all, I hope you have a beautiful week. Continue to pray for those and serve those in other communities and other areas, because that is our job as human beings and continue to celebrate your identity, which is more than enough. I love you all so much and cheers to you. Bye y'all. That was my um, pause. I'll edit this out. What's that noise? <laughs> that is so loud. Got it. What was that? That was an alarm. That was so annoying. You should have just stopped earlier. <laughs>